All right, fanboy, you guys ready for this next panel? Woo it's Deborah Foreman, everybody. Hello, hello. This is, let me bring it closer to me. Perfect. Okay, there. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> How's it going? It's going awesome. It's been wonderful being here. Yeah. Have, have you gotten like a chance to explore the city at all? I know you guys keep pretty busy, but. Yeah, I didn't have night. I had to sleep the night before. That was thir yeah, Thursday night because I flew in on Friday. I went straight from the airport to here. So then Friday night I went to bed. <laughs> Yesterday I was, I was uh, pretty busy. So when I went uh, back to the hotel, I went to bed. <laughs> Sleep support. No, sleep support. I got up this morning and here I am. So no, I haven't had a chance. But through driving, I've seen some pretty things. Same <laughs> mountains, which is very different than Florida, and, where and we don't have a waterfall. Yeah. You know, coming into here. Well, thank you so much for being here this weekend. This is so awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I, I wanted to uh, first ask because I tend to be very like obsessed with soundtracks of films, okay. and I think the soundtrack from Valley Girl is just next to none. Okay. Do you have a favorite song off the soundtrack? Well, obviously it would be I'm Out With You. Okay. Uh, 100%. Great, great choice. Yeah. But here's some information. Um, the 35 millimeter, which was air, uh, shown, and uh, I was in Olympia, Washington, maybe, <laughs> I think one weekend ago, <laughs> and I did a screening of Valley Girl there. They had a 35 millimeter. That music is different from the digital. Why is that? Is there a reason? Um, probably because I think there was some discrepancy. There's some music issues. Um, when we were released, or when Valley Girl the Musical re was released uh, three years ago, um, I think that they needed to settle those issues, the music issues, so that we could be released on all platforms like Netflix and Hulu and Amazon. And they did. Orion uh, lawyers got in, and MGM lawyers got in, and they resolved it. So then when they had their official release, which we were locked down, so they didn't have like a theater release, they had an online release. Mm -hmm. We were re-released with it as a package, and we were then, we can, you can rent us on all platforms. So that music is different from the 35 millimeter. Cool. I know, okay, right? That's interesting. I didn't know it. A fan told me about it what, that day, like after they watched it. They said, the music, and they kept, they pointed out which scenes that the music was different. That's so wow. interesting. I did not okay. even know. Now I'm going to have to rewatch and, and see if I can figure it out. But Okay, so you mentioned, you said you were at a screening for it? Uh, oh yeah, so I was in Olympia, Washington at the Capitol Theater, and they had me come in and uh, screen April Fool's Day on a Friday night, and uh, screen Valley Girl on a Saturday night. Such a pretty city too, by the way. I bet. And um, it was fun. It's, I love to do those. I've done those twice this year. I did one in Olympia, uh, Olympia, <laughs> in Ohio. I don't know where I got Olympia from, Ohio, but anyway, Ohio. <laughs> it's a new place. You'll love that. It's like, like what the heck? Um, Columbus, Ohio. And then I was in Decatur, Indiana, uh, for April Fool's Day. That's, that's so fun. So yeah, those are different. They're not cons. So you just show up to screen your movie and do a Q&A and meet people afterwards. And so it's a little bit different experience, more intimate. And, uh, and fun. I like to do those. Yeah, I, I always love going to those as well. And you know, seeing as you get to watch the movie again, maybe this most recent time or a time before, besides the music, when you watch these movies, is there something that you'll either be like, oh yeah, I remember that moment, or something that you picked up on that you didn't remember from before? I think I can just sit and enjoy the whole thing now rather than just watch me. I can, because it's been such a long time, I can sort of detach myself that that is me I'm watching, but I can enjoy the story uh, and everybody's a part in it. So uh, I think that from that aspect, yeah, I like it. I like all of it when I look back on it. That's so. I, I see a half baked girl, you know, meaning I'm not evolved yet. Mm -hmm. That's what I see because I'm, I feel like I'm fully evolved now or ish because <laughs> there, there's always room to grow. <laughs> But yeah, I feel like, wow, she's so young. <laughs> Do you remember what the audition process was like for the film? Valley Girl? Yes. Okay, so it's a pretty good story. Um, I hope I'm not repeating this because I have said it a lot, but um, it's a, I went to go do a go see with Jennifer Shaw. She is a, at the time, was a casting director for, I think it was Burbank Studio. So it's, a, it's one casting person that's kind of in charge of all casting for the studio. So I go and I meet her, and it's just a go-see, and I bring your re resume, and she's supposed to meet her, and greet, that's it, just say hello, just ask, answer a few questions. 
she said to me, there's a film that is being cast on the lot I think you'd be perfect for. And I went, okay, and it was, it's called Valley Girl. We want you to go meet the uh, casting people. She called the casting office and had me, I had to walk over there and then meet them. And uh, that day I auditioned for it. And then they said, can you stay? Because this, this, this was in the morning. Can you stay for the afternoon and meet with the director? And the producer said, okay. Now there, were, we, there was only pay phones that you can go and tell. I, and I went to a pay phone and I called my agent. I said, they want me to audition, go ahead. Uh, they want me to stay, go ahead. So you know, I'm, I'm going through the process. It just was organic. That's all I can tell you because my agent didn't give me that audition. This woman felt I would be right for a film that was on her lot, that was under her charge. You know, so I, w I went in, and I, I think that was a Friday, and I had it by Monday. Oh, that, so that, that was quick. Oh, yeah. He oh did gosh. push it. He was afraid that they were sort of, you know, I think other women were up for the role. I don't know who else, you guys. I've heard stories like, wow, if that's true, that'd be cool. But I don't know who else was auditioning, because I, I, I was so green at the time. I probably wasn't even aware of anybody's work at the time anyway. But he pushed it, and he said to them, and this is a true story, he said, she is booked for another film called French Woman in Love, and you need to make a decision because if, she, if, if you don't want her for this, she's going to do that one in France. <laughs> and so they pushed it, and they, they did it. They hired me. Yeah, that was that, it. And, and it, was, it was not true. Oh. oh. I didn't have a film called French Woman in Love. <laughs> no, it was a complete false, it was completely vague. Interesting. Okay. It's, a good, it's a good title, though. I yeah, think. right? I think there should be a film called French Women in Love. Now. Okay. I now to, I want to start it. You, you have to. <laughs> you have to. Did, did you do a chemistry read with, with Nick Cage, or was that just something that... Uh, we auditioned once, and then I auditioned with Peter Barton, too, and then I know I auditioned with Fred, um, Cameron Dye. Oh, wow. Because they okay. were considering him, too, for Randy mm -hmm. at one point. And that's it. I auditioned just for them. And I, I think the scenes, I can't remember the scenes that we auditioned, but I remember there was some Valley Girls speak in it. And then I listened to Moon Zappa's song, because I didn't know. I'm from Texas. It's like, what the heck is this? Ah. Yeah. So I was just, I just kind of picked up on, I just heard some stuff that I thought, okay, I can incorporate that. But when we went to do the film, Martha Coolidge said to me, yeah, we're going to put the Valley Girls speak in the very beginning of the film, but, but really we're going to, you know, we're going to uh, turn it down a little bit, and it, we're going to pump up the volume on the relationship. The, it's, it's a love story. Mm -hmm. So the, she did want an in, in there, but that's why it's not in, you're not inundated by her. Oh, my God. You totally know? fair. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. I, I love that. What well, was the French woman in love? Coming, coming to a theater near you very soon. Very soon. <laughs> well, uh, to pivot, and since you've already talked about some of your other works, okay. I, I think it's, it's so neat. And I think it's an incredibly prestigious title to be deemed a scream queen. Okay. And I want to know, what does that mean to you, to be a scream queen? Hmm. I've never really thought about it, only because um, I just do, because I've done comedy and I've done horror and drama, I've done pretty much a lot of all of it, and every single time I did work, I just changed myself just a little bit. I mean, there's a, always a, a thread of me in everything that I do, but I've changed my parents. So. Um, and once again, I've changed my appearance again for something I'm doing at the end of the month. Uh, I think it's an, yes, it is an honor because people, you know, a horror film, to me, I, at nine years old, when my mom and dad would go on a date and I was babysitting my brother, I was in front of the TV set watching Frankenstein and werewolf movies and Dracula, the old ones, the Hammer films, you know? And those were, those were my things. Dang, I just loved them. I loved how they scared me, and I love how they made me feel bigger, you know, bigger than life kind of thing. So it's an honor to be called a scream queen, yeah. And I've been screaming pretty good. Can so, you? Yeah. Any tips? I, won't, I won't do that because I'll blow your ears out. <laughs> and you don't want you to have to, you know. <laughs> right? like, any tips for like the perfect scream? Okay, so I was in choir. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you don't want to blow your vocal cords out. You want to scream from your diaphragm. <laughs> and so that would be my the tip, is that you know, make sure you just scream from your diaphragm and make the sound go. And this is going to sound really silly, but I've done some dialect co uh, things with coaches. And when they do French accents or English accents, there's always there's a sound. And where does that sound come? Is it going through the top of your head or out just through, between your teeth? Or is it uh, going between your nose and your lips here? If there's ways that sound come, it comes through your head so I would always say for a scream make sure it resonates out the top of your head okay yeah I think okay. so 
fair enough. <laughs> Good to know. Next time I, know, I ever right? have to scream for whatever reason, from the diaphragm through the top of your head. I know. Make sure it hits that top of your, the roof of your mouth out through the top of your head. It's gonna sound's gonna come out this way, but also you can make it go out through the top of your head. Got it. I love that. I, I know. Uh, I know another person that's praised your work and that I'm a fan of is Joe Bob Briggs. Okay. So have you had the opportunity to meet him and work with no, him? No, I've heard about him. I've heard a few things that he has said, and thank you so much for what he has said. But no, I don't know him, and I've, I know he said, does a drive-in. Yes, I was, yes, he does. I know. I was hoping to do that maybe in the future because someone was trying to hook that up. I think because I uh, another another man knows him. I did two Dallas shows last year, and he brought it up. That's all I know at this point, though, because I in December I have uh, there'll be 13 of these underneath my belt. So I've been pretty busy this year. Yeah, it's okay. So we're going to have to get a hold of Darcy. Let her know you're interested. Darcy, okay. the male lady from his show as well. Awesome. I know okay. she helps out a lot with that. I think that would be so great. It'd be fun. I think that'd be a hoot. Yeah. Which of your movies would you like to see him uh, navigate through? Probably April Fool's Day. Um, yeah, I think that would be the one. I think I agree. Yeah. I think I agree. Uh, so you had mentioned that you are currently working on something. Are you allowed to? Yes, okay. I am completely. Let's it's been up. announced on my Instagram. It's called The Demon, Demons Within. It's a theological thriller, and it's based on true events. I was reading that. Ooh. So that is very creepy. Yeah, very, right? And it's a cell phone usage with this young woman, and my part is she's going to come into the hospital having already... Uh, and this isn't too much of a giveaway, having already tried to commit suicide, and I'm, I have to speak with the director whether I'm going to already be possessed or someone that actually possesses me as I come in. So I have to work uh -huh. that, I have to work out the logistics, because <laughs> that's important. Like, you know, is it a walk-in or am I actually uh, evil? So I have to work that out, but I'm going to be her nurse, Dee Dee, and they want me to be kind of a, like a nurse ratchet. Oh, fun, okay. Yeah. So, and it's, and my part is, is a little bit bigger than a bread box. Okay. And bigger than the cameo I did in Valley Girl. And a really nice way for me to go, you know what? This is going to be fun again. I think my 60s are going to be fun. Yay. Yeah. And how did you get involved with the project? She contacted me. Just, my, uh, yeah. Oh. She wrote me. You know, I, I've been in the email, I, we all have, when email first started happening to us in 93 or 94, I've been getting emails from people for a very long time. And when hers rolled in and the way she spoke to me, she hooked me. I don't know what it was. She just has a way of speaking. I got her. I went, yeah. Let's. I said. I said to her, send me the script. Boom. She sent it to me. I said, and highlight what I had to do. She highlighted. I went, I'm in. That was it. That was it. Simple. Yeah. Simple and very easy. And she's cool too. She's a super cool woman. So okay, you mentioned it's about demonic possession based on a true story. So yeah. do you personally believe in these? Hundred percent. Really? Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh yes. Have you ever had I an will... encounter? Yeah, oh, okay, I will tell you about something strange, you guys. Okay, yes, I do. That's why I will never watch Eyes Wide Shut again, and I will never watch Exorcist ever again. So I'm in New Orleans, and this is a true story, you guys. I cannot tell you, I don't even know how it happened, but it did happen. I'm just in the shop buying trinkets in, in New Orleans with my fella. And, and the guy behind the counter, you know, we're buying t-shirts and little shot glasses and blah, whatever. So I, he says to me, he's talking to me about his dad. And I, and I said, oh, that's really cool. He said, uh, is your dad still alive? And I go, no, he's dead. OK. Then I say, and my other dad's dead too. So I step back a moment, and I go, I stepped outside. And I said, John, what the? He goes, that was so mean. I said, John, I have no idea why I just said that to that man. I said, I, I, I don't even, you guys, I have still to this day no, don't know why I said that to that man. Because both of my dads are alive. One of them I don't know that well. The other one I haven't seen in a long time. I still have love for both of them. And I do not know why I said that. Now, do I think that something stepped into me? I never felt something step into me. But I don't go around telling lies like that either. So... Walk-ins, maybe, I don't know. Do I believe in walk-ins? 100%. So all I can say is it happened in a weird way in New Orleans, and you know what? Because it happened in New Orleans, I will never go back to New Orleans, because I think that place is dead evil. I just won't. I even had a strange dizzy spell at one point that I had to grab a hold of John before I went down. 
It was, a, I was there for literally 24 hours and I will never go back there well, as that's long enough. as I live. It was strange. So, and one other encounter, I had sort of a dark shadow over my bed one night and I, I rose up, it rose with me, scared the poo out of me. It was, I was the first time I was in this house, I was living with Elizabeth, Elizabeth Daly and I had rented a house together and it was our first night there and she's coming up the staircase and as I scream, I go, she goes, Debbie? I go, yes, oh my God, da, 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 da. and I told her what had just happened to me. So two weird encounters, so 100% I believe it, and now I just say protection over myself when I, you know. Yeah, is there something I, specific that you do? Like, Yeah, I do, I say protections, but that, that's as far as I'll go. <laughs> wow. But yeah. Okay. I yeah. was going to say, like, maybe, you know, in those moments when something does overtake your body, maybe you're not always <coughs> notified, maybe you don't always I'm do something. I'm telling you. I don't, I don't think that stuff, something took over and spoke for me, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I didn't feel like something was there in me. Just something spoke for me. That's all I know. Something spoke. And then I had to like try to work, you know, John, that wasn't me, John. And how do you explain that? It wasn't me. It's like, you're a little, um, we, I've known you how long, Deb? <laughs> Well, it was strange. It was okay, well, super strange. I've never been to New Orleans, and now I might just. See. So the demons within. I will be super. I'll be doing super protection over myself on that one. Where are you guys filming? Ohio. Oh, Ohio. Uh huh. Fabulous. And have you already started production on it? Or no. Is it... At the end of the month, I fly in on the second. I shoot on the third, and I'm out on the fourth. Wow. Yeah. That's exciting. Do you know any of your other fellow castmates that are going to be part of the? No. And here's what's so cool, you guys. Every single cast person that's been. They were already cast before me. They've reached out to me and said hello. Just wanted to introduce themselves to me. I went, you know what? That's never happened to me on any film I've ever done. Thank you so much. That's so sweet of you. I won't, I won't have any scenes with some of these people that reached out to me. I said, that's so kind of you. And when she asked me to be, she said, you're a part of our team. And it's all about team. She keeps mentioning that word. I said, you know what? That's how this is. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So I hope I didn't creep anybody out. <laughs> are, are we all okay? Protection, you know, protection. My okay. weird little story, but it happened. No, I, I always am so fascinated by that kind of stuff because that's I, I've had I've had some moments, so I, uh -huh. I understand. Okay. Okay. Good. Well, all mine have been positive. Like okay. I've never had anything that's like speak for you. No, I've only okay. had. I'll, I'll tell you about it after because okay. I don't. I'll, yeah. I'll, 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 I want to talk to you for a moment. Yes, okay. absolutely. So if you guys have any questions, now is your chance to ask about anything and everything. Yes, my friend. Oh, okay, just awesome. Him and I kind of worked a lot alike, and I feel like you know there's heart there's heart energy and there's a head uh, mind energy, and Nick and I uh, we worked in that film heart energy so everything that we would do was all based in heart everything our words everything was based in heart um, also uh, he had been to acting class um, prior to it and so had I we both took copious notes even before working we loved rehearsal um, talking about the characters in between takes and and we had some nuances that we actually I don't know if you guys uh, us uh, some of it you can't see it but we knew about it but I saw it today actually when I was looking at a video when it's the montage and he's dropping me off in front of the house, I'm wearing a black leather jacket, so is he. Because now we're sort of melting. Our, our characters are melting into one another and we're dressing a little like. That's, what that, that's why they did that. I go to the, I'm at the front door and I do this to him and he does it back. And you guys, it's just us giving each other our noses. I, that's all it was. We just came up with it. I'm going to give you my nose and he's going to give me his. And that was it. And it's just a weird kind of young, youthful thing that we added to the movie. So, and it's ours. So when I see it, I know what that means. No one else knows what it means, but we did. And now we know. I know, that's right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the know. Or in the nose, I should I know, say. we were in the nose. <laughs> Any other questions? Are you still friends with uh, Nick and Val? Oh, interesting question. Uh, no. Uh, I mean, we would be friendly if we saw each other because I saw the interview he did with Kevin Smith at the uh, it was IMDb interview that he did with him. And he launched. That was the first thing he even said. Well, first off, I want to let you know. And he, he spoke about me. So uh, I think we're both extremely fond of each other. We don't have each other's phone number and we don't keep in touch but I guarantee you if we were in the same room it would be Nicholas Cage, Deborah Foreman, you know, and walk each other and hug each other. Val I haven't seen oh, I think since 
real genius. We did those, we did those together, and then we hung out a little bit afterwards, and I have not seen him since. Yeah. Any other questions? Go ahead. Uh, all right, you mentioned uh, uh, Miss Daly. Are you still friends with her and any idea of their, your Valley Girls crew? Yes, Elizabeth and I are really good friends. Uh, we did a con together a couple of weeks ago, Mad Monster Party, oh, and she got to sit next. We got to sit next to each other, and we had so much fun. I, I get bummed because I would love to do a lot of cons with Elizabeth, um, but what happens is when you book these, everyone has a different way of booking, and ours don't match up in terms of uh, booking like guarantees and stuff like that. So. I hope to see her again. I hope, I hope. I even wrote her, I go, we, we, I want to see you sooner than, that's just not right. You know, because she lives in LA. I live in Chester, New Jersey. So, but we text back and forth. And she's the only one. I don't really keep, keep in touch um, with anybody else in Valley Girl. Um, Cameron Dye got a chance to speak with when we did the musical. I uh, got to talk to him on the phone a little bit and catch up. And that's been three years ago. And yeah, I haven't talked to anybody else. But Elizabeth, I love. We were roommates. She's a sister. Yes? So, with all the remakes that are coming out and everything, you think there might ever be a Valley Girl 2 that you and Nick might be able to get together and, and do something where maybe you guys have kids to get, you know? You didn't get together then, but you kind of... Because yeah. huh? they did a reboot. They, they did a reboot. They did a musical. We did it. They, they did ask him to be in it, and he declined. Uh, so did Cameron Die. He declined. Um, just uh, and I think Michelle may 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 have to decline only because she lives in Canada. Uh, but Elizabeth and Heidi Holliker and myself did did come back for the musical and we have cameos in it. Um, but to do a film with Nick, I don't. I would rather do something where Nick and I um, just a whole other story, uh, something country <coughs> in the country, something I don't know, something where something struggling, something. What a what drama. It? The French girl and... <laughs> French woman in love stories. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. That's cute. <laughs> I do feel, though, you guys, because it's not that I'm psychic, but I'm intuitive. We are going to work together again, Nick and I, in the future. I don't know in what capacity. I don't know how big or small. We will work together again. Sounds like you need to do this small little, hey, how you doing type of thing, just to get that... Ball rolling. Well, I was invited. You know, he did this really wonderful film recently where he stars and plays himself. Mm -hmm. And I was invited to the screening and I got the invitation. I went, <laughs> did they mess up the address? <laughs> you know, and it was sent to me. So that was like, I went, okay, there's a connection being formed and it's maybe not even him and I doing it. It's, the it's, world. A, it's, it's, a, it's a really neat thing how things work organically mm -hmm. and synchronous. Did you, know. you go to it? I'm in Chester, no, I didn't, I couldn't go. It was in Los Angeles, so. I, I do want to see it, I'm gonna rent it. I don't know if it's available yet, but I'm definitely gonna rent it. It's like, cause I hear such good things about it. I can't I wait, did you see it? Yeah, I think it is available. Oh, okay, good, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be renting it then in the next week, yeah. Any Let's other questions? Okay, I'll have the most shallow question. Did you love the clothes that you were wearing and was there any outfit that was off your Okay, so a lot of the film, um, uh, Valley Girl, you're talking about Valley Girl, right? Yes. Okay, so um, it, they were my clothes, but Heidi Holliker has put some input saying that a lot of, they were her clothes too, so I'm sure I did wear some of hers as well, but I did have my own. And in the scene, so I'll, I'll loop around to the end of that question, but in the scene where I'm working at the diner with my parents or the cafe, it starts out with me in a pair of turquoise, and I'm in jeans, and then I'm in turquoise, and that's because those turquoise pants were stolen. Even that turquoise shirt eventually was stolen, and I, I was so bummed, because that I, a guy had given me that from high school. <laughs> it's like, it was, it was my polo shirt with my own. I went, ah, oh, it's gone now. And then um, my favorite outfit would have to be, I love the party scene. I love those sort of maroon jeans and that high top, that high neck shirt and those, and my shoes matched my pants, and it was it, it was washed. It was it was that denim wash? You know, it was cool. I liked that outfit the best. Yeah, and it was suited that hairstyle. All of it, you know. Martha Coolidge, Coolidge wanted one of us to wear that high hairstyle. One of us had to have it. And this is before we started to shoot. And I said, I'll take it. Thank you. Yeah, I liked it. I liked it. It was fun. 
Then Sally Field had it too. Ah, oh, she stole it. She she swiped my she swiped my new. <laughs> right, another question, right behind Jeff. I think so. Do you have any specific types of movies that you would prefer to do? Uh, edgy. That's going to be it. Yeah, edgy. Edgy and heartfelt. <laughs> How do you put that together? Uh, they'll work it out, not me. <laughs> Sci-fi edgy. Yeah. End of the world edgy. Ooh, you know? Yeah. Something like that. Where you're kind of going to be a badass. And I see that more, and, uh, and believe it or not, I know I'm, I don't look like maybe I can do that, but trust me, <laughs> I will turn on that tiger, and I will, be, I will make it happen. <laughs> Are there any final questions? Uh, one of the other things I wanted to ask you about that I saw, maybe you can tell us more about it. Are you a certified yoga instructor? I am. I got certified. It's so interesting because I'm now back into it. So when we got locked down, I, you know, everything was closed, so I started Zooming my yoga class, and I got to go uh, do yoga classes with my teacher in Los Angeles, which I couldn't when I moved to Big Bear Lake, and I stopped doing yoga for about 12 years, so I got to Zoom with her. So prior to that in Los Angeles, me moving to Big Bear, I taught at UCLA uh, in the Dynasty Room, and I'm forgetting now what other room it was, but Dynasty Room, definitely, the John Wooden Center. and. And then I also got my certificate in Pilates. So I was teaching Pilates at a chiropractic office, and then I taught Pilates in a studio, a proper Pilates studio, which I was also teaching yoga there, too. So I did that for a good 10-something years, and then I just became a couch potato in Big Bear. I don't know, you know, what, it's not really a workout town. It's a ski town or a water ski town. And then when we got locked down, I, I'm now back into it, doing my Pilates and yoga, and I feel good. Yeah, yeah, right. Namaste. I love it. Well, Namaste, Namaste in bed. Is yes, exactly. <laughs> Namaste in your case. Uh, before we do wrap this up, any thoughts you want to leave us with here today? Ah, okay. So, I, a thing that I always leave with people is, you know, ask yourself what preferred life you would want, you want to be li uh, leading and living, and then answer that question for yourself, and then ask questions. What exciting questions? will line up with that preferred life and make sure they're exciting questions for yourself to, that excite you. And then through that, is joy coming into your life with it and is inspiration coming into your life with it? And how is that affecting others too around you? So that's kind of, since 2018, I've been really living that and my life has changed and it continues to change and it continues to excite me and um, surprise me. And just like this film came into my life, it just things drop into your into your lap when you're leading your preferred life. So it will seem a little out of sorts at first, but I guarantee you, as soon as you start asking those questions, thing, things will start lining up, and then you don't have to worry about much after that. So, but that's I, I leave that with people. That's all. Thank you so much. <laughs> this has been such a delight. Thank you so Thank much you. for being here this Thank weekend. You. Nice meeting you. Of course, take Step a nice moment, everybody. Here today. Thank you. Hi, this is Bonnie Gordon, and you're watching Fandom Spotlight. Make sure to like and subscribe before the self destructs in five, four, three, two, one. Just kidding. Have fun and follow your fandom.